Hello everybody and welcome to my top 100 magic cards of all time. I'm super excited to run down the list of the cards that I love the most. And, you know, it's, this is going to be my list. These are just my top 100, my top 10 is kind of weird because it's the cards that mean the most to me. You know, the great thing about magic, not only is, you know, the community and the unbelievable sort of a hype that you get around the cards themselves, but it's also kind of what those cards mean to you. There's stories behind these cards. There's feelings that have sort of are associated with certain cards, effects, pieces of artwork, whatever it is and we're really going to explore that in this series so so i want to take a look at my top 100 beginning of course with number 100. number 100 is troll ascetic now troll ascetic was a creature that came out in mirror and it was a big deal three mana three two it had this ability nobody had ever seen before like i don't even know what this means it's super crazy well, actually, troll ascetic would blow people's minds it was like oh my god and so back in the day there was two memories i have distinctly for troll ascetic the first one was during the saviors of kamigawa pre-release now if you want to experience true sadness you really should have attended those pre-releases because that set was really bad it was it was seriously bad it was one of those things where at the end of this story, my friend wins a box of cards. We open up all the packs. We get a pithy needle, high five. Nothing else is worth a dollar. It's horrible, so that's bad. Anyway, my friend was playing against a mono blue control player and he was either mono blue or blue white. And regardless, he had every answer in the world to a creature, but he could not stop the three two from killing him. Because of that hexproof ability, it really showed the power of hexproof to me, and really showed that yeah, it's just sort of a it's a three mana three two. But at the time, that was sort of above the curve, and certainly that ability has has turned out to be one as well. Number ninety nine is Phyrexian Dreadnought. Now Phyrexian Dreadnought was a big deal back in the day. Mirage was hyped as having a one mana twelve twelve, and like everybody, me and my friends, everybody around the shop was just like, oh my god, what's a one mana twelve twelve going to be? They're going to have to balance it somehow. What are they going to do? And when it was finally revealed, it was like, oh, poop. So having something be a one mana twelve twelve trampler, which is also something they spoil the time, uh, was you know unbelievably exciting. But those drawbacks were super huge. So it was one of the first cards that I got really excited about and then got really kind of let down on. And so certainly it hasn't sort of jaded me by any means, but it was really the first one to kind of have that experience and me to try to temper just a little bit what I think about upcoming cards. Number 98 is Urnum Jin. Now Urnum Jin is super sweet. The card back in the day like back in the day, it blew people's minds. This thing was reprinted in Chronicles. They didn't reprint Jazam Jin because, you know, clearly that was just infinitely better uh, because it was a four mana five five. This is a four mana four five. But again, during the day, there was nothing close to this guy's stats for his cost. And it also gives Forest Walk to another, you know, creature your opponent controls. And back in the day, that was a big deal. Giving things, lane, like giving things land walk was like, oh my God, what are they doing? So given their forest walk, whatever, you play Armageddon and certainly Urnumgeddon is born. Green White Urnumgeddon played little creatures like White Knights and Order of Leap Beer and then it played uh, and then it would play Urnum Jin and then it would blow up the world. And it doesn't matter if you give a land walk to something, because you're just smashing in and your creature, your four or five, is bigger than anything else that they're playing, because by the time you get to that mana cost, your creatures are way bigger than theirs, particularly Urnum. This card was sweet. <laughs> 97 is Revelark. Revelark is an amazing magic card. Uh, it came out during Morning Tide. In Morning Tide, you know, it had Bitter Blossom was there. That was a thing. But the, this kind of sort of rode under the radar for a little while. And it's really cool because Morning, first of all, it's an incredibly powerful card. There was a, there was an infinite combo with it that was really strange. You had to know triggers and things. Uh, but, but really, it's a card that they used to send it to those who wanted to work in Wizards R&D. And they would send them like the set of Morning Tide before Morning Tide was out. They would send it to Perspectives and they would say, hey, well, we want you to look at this set and tell us which one is like the scariest or which one is the most dangerous card. Um, and Rebel Arc was it because it keys off something very interesting. It's power two or less. Now, it's always been these effects have usually always been tempered by by keying off mana cost. Two or less mana cost, well, there's certain things that happen at two mana or less, and usually those things are kind of kept in check. We won't talk about the, the suspend cards and ancestral vision or whatever, but you know, but things with actual mana costs usually are tempered, particularly in standard. But now that it's just two power or less, anything with zero power that had some insane ability, or even one or two, of course, was nuts. So you had Moldrifters coming back. I mean, you know, you had uh, 
all sorts of Kithkin. There was there was a whole there was a there was an infant combo piece with body double. So there was the body double Rebel Arc combo that went with the other creature that I can't remember who I will put on the screen who said X colon. You turn all your creatures into XXs, so you turn them all into zero zeros, and you have the trigger on the stack and blah blah blah. This card was sweet. It was the first like it was certainly a, a clearly a powerful card whether you just played it for five mana or whether you evoked it. Rebel Arc is awesome. <laughs> Lightning Helix is next. Now, Lightning Helix is your two mana Lightning Bolt plus Healing Salve. It is just stapled them together, but it's an amazing package. It's an absolutely incredible deal. There's never really been anything quite at this rate since this card. Now, they put it in Modern Masters and they put it in some dual decks, and that's awesome. So, there's plenty of copies out there. It's not like you can't get any, but come on. You know and I know. Lightning Helix will forever be beloved by giving you the largest, most insane top deck in the history of Magic. Choice. Char you, I like the play. You want... <laughs> the crowd is Come in. On, it. Smash it, smash it. What Come is on, on top smash of the it. deck? What is on top of the deck? Oh, oh it's Lightning Helix! Oh my god! Oh my god! Craig Jones is through the finals! Oh my god! I know, I know. I had to show it because look, man, Randy Bueller just loses his freaking mind, which is absolutely oh my god, it Lightning Helix, woo! You know, that's just it's just fantastic. So Lightning Helix, love this card. Went on top of Isochron Scepter. I used to play Zoo and Extended when that was still a format. And yeah, mm. and uh, and Isochron Scepter decks, Orms Orms Chant, Isochron Scepter decks used to also play Lightning Helix, so they could put on the Scepter. And that was really annoying because I was trying to play Zoo and that wasn't cool. But regardless, Lightning Helix is just, it's a beloved card. It's great. It's been great forever. Ever since it's seen print, it's been really awesome and I love it. 95 is Core Skyfisher. Now look, if you play Popper, I play Popper. If you play Popper, you're looking at some Core Skyfishers pretty freaking often. They are a part of multiple decks, whether they are Metalcraft decks or whether they're just some kind of like Sneaky, tricksy type, just pick up your stuff to put it back down for weird advantages and reality acids and stuff like that. So, Core Skyfisher is a really awesome card, just put in a really great package. Two mana for a 2 3 flyer, always awesome. The ability is totally sweet. Like, even if sometimes in some triggers, you literally just play him and pick him back up. Like, I've seen this card. I don't know so much about in powered cubes, but I've certainly seen it in common and uncommon cubes, and it's going to be all over. It's going to be one of the best rates that you're going to be able to get, and it's brought so much joy to me because it's it's just in these little interactions. It doesn't have to be like overwhelmingly great. Love this guy, and I love to play with him. Of course, Sky Fisher is great. <laughs> Coalition Relic is next. <laughs> This card is unbelievably awesome. This card has always been a cube all-star. I have loved Coalition Relic. I love playing with this thing. It enables unbelievably powerful decks. It, it fast forwards your mana. It fixes your mana. I mean, this rate was unbelievable. Back in Future Sight, I mean, my God, as soon as people found it, it just took off because this card just does everything. And in Cube Draft, it's just, it, I mean, I love first picking a Coalition Relic. I love it. Now, clearly, I would pick other things over it, but when there's no Soul Ring or whatever or Ancestral Recall hanging around, Coalition Relic is one of the best cards that you can open. It goes in every single Cube deck. It doesn't matter. It fixes every time. It fixes, it accelerates, it washes, it dries. Something about fries. Coalition Relic Sweet. Number 93 is Greater Gargadon. Greater Gargadon, look, not everybody loved Time Spiral. Time Spiral was meant for like the old school. Now clearly I kind of had a gap where, <clears throat> where I left the game from around Exodus to Mirrodin. And so between those times, it's kind of, you know, so I didn't get every single in-joke in Time Spiral. But there's a lot of awesome in-jokes in Time Spiral. It really is the set made for, like, the, the most engaged of Magic players. Uh, but it also had some really complicated mechanics like Suspend. So Suspend was weird and different. A lot of people didn't really know kind of how to play with it or around it. Like, this guy has been in my queue by... Uh, for a very, very long time, almost since the inception, because it's hard to get rid of Greater Gargadon. It has amazing, uh, like if you have sort of threatened effects where you're able to take opponent's stuff, you're able to sacrifice the Greater Gargadon, any sort of threatened effects, control magic type of effects, even if they're temporary, work great. Sometimes you just go all in. You're just like, all right, da -da 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 -da, you're tapped out, uh, okay, kill you. You know, like that is awesome. So even if it's around kind of a weirdly confusing mechanic, that doesn't mean it's not sweet. It's a one mana nine seven. Who doesn't like one mana nine sevens? Seriously. 
Number 92 is Zealous Conscripts. Zealous Conscripts is the best threat and effect ever. Like literally ever. It is the best sort of control your stuff temporarily type thing. Now they call those threat and effects because threaten was one of the first effects for, to really kind of do that. And there's a whole bunch of red cards that do this now or do certain types of it. I mean, even we printed a new one uh, just now in Kaladesh, which is coming out as I record this. But Zealous Conscripts took planeswalkers that's a huge deal and so the ability to steal a planeswalker and then run its ultimate out was just oh it was just it was oh it was so good like there was nothing better than taking your opponents you know whatever jay soaring something and just be like pop thanks appreciate it you know it's really really fun doing business with you uh, you know, their, their Tamiyo, oh, oh, it was so good. Like, Zealous Conscripts is incredibly powerful. It's a 3-3 Haster on a 5-mana guy. It was unbelievable and limited, but it's constructed all starters. It's one of those cards that I don't think I can really find the tweet, but there was a point in time where Aaron Forsyth said, you know, uh, it was Zealous Conscripts, like, too good. <laughs> like, with that card, kind of pushed. Uh, like, that card does amazing things at 5-mana. Card is fantastic. <laughs> Number 91 is Vampire Nighthawk. Vampire Nighthawk is, or certainly was, ridiculously above the curve. Now these days, creatures are starting to get a lot better. Suddenly we have a vanilla 3-2 for 2 mana in green. I mean, you know, GG Grizzly Bears, you know, it's been, it's been real. But seriously, Vampire Nighthawk was so above the curve, it was crazy. At the time, Zendikar, they, they debuted it and then it was like, yeah, it's an uncommon. You're like, that's an uncommon? Unbelievable! This card was super sweet. Certainly a limited all-star was in cubes forever from the very first moment, man. That thing was straight in the cube. Super fantastic. I love the rate. I love the design. I love the artwork. I mean, look at that artwork, man. Holy cow. Jason Chan, also known as the guy who, you know, illustrated Jace the Mind Sculptor, amongst other amazing pieces of artwork. Just so iconic. That sliver of moon hanging off on the ledge. This card's super sweet, super overpowered, really, for its kind of its era where maybe these days not, but man, at the time, it was fantastic. So thanks for hanging out and joining me for my first 10 of my top 100 Magic cards. I hope you guys get a kick out of it because I love talking about Magic cards and these are some of my favorites. Join me next time for my next top 10 going from 90 to 81 where the first enchantments are going to show up, where a card that I've begged R&D to, to reprint forever is going to show up, some of the cool stuff from Antiquities and Legends. It's going to be awesome. Until next time, Magic players, this is Evan Irwin. Tap on the cards so you don't have to.